Today we're going to learn about equivalent fractions and order in fractions. Putting fractions in order of size. So how do I know if two fractions are, are equal? I've got some examples here. We talked about simplifying fractions last time. So one way is we could say if this one here with the higher denominator simplifies to this one. Or the other way is we multiply. Notice how if we multiply this 3 by 2, I get 6. And if I multiply this 2 by 5, I get 10. So if I do that, I get 10, 6. And 10 6 isn't equal to 2 thirds. So those aren't equal. So we can multiply it by the same, both by the same number, the numerator and the denominator. Because notice here, this is mul this 3 has been multiplied by 2. So if I multiply this 5 by 2, then I'm doing the same to both the top and the bottom. And then if you get a fraction that simplifies back to this, then they're equal. If you don't, then they're not equal. Now notice how these ones, if I divide both these by 2, if I divide both of these by 3, I get 1 half, so these two are equal. And notice with these ones, if I divide the top and the bottom by 2, I get 1 here and 5 there. So those are equal. These ones here are not equal. And you can check that if you want by multiplying or in fact maybe it's not because you can easily check that those two fractions aren't equal. Now we're going to talk about what? Lowest common multiple and lowest common denominator. So lowest common multiple is the lowest multiple of two numbers. So the lowest multiple of 2 and 10 is 10. Because that's the last multiple of both 2 and 10 because 2, 4, 6 and 8 are multiples of 2 but not multiples of 10 for the next one it would be 15 15 is the biggest multiple of 5 and 3 and for the next one it's 42 42 is the biggest the, the lowest multiple of 6 and 7 now we're going to do lowest common denominator. Lowest common denominator is basically just the same thing to find the, the denominator so that we can put both of these fractions under the same denominator here. So I want to make both of these fractions the same denominator. So the lowest, so I look for the lowest multiple of 2 and 3 and that's 6. So I write both of these as 6. Now notice how here I've multiplied by 3 and here I've multiplied by 2. And I have to do the same to the top. So I multiply this 1 by 3 here and I multiply this 2 by 2 here. So those are the same two fractions with the lowest common denominator of both fractions. Next one I want to find the lowest multiple of 6 and 12, that's 12. So I express these both of multiple 12. That's still 1 because I've multiplied it by 1, that doesn't change it. I've multiplied this by 2 here, I multiply it 5 by 2, I get 10. So there we go. That's what we get here. I multiply both the numerator and denominator by the same number.
But before I do that, I find the lowest common denominator, which is just the lowest common multiple of both the numbers in the bottom of the fraction, the denominator. Now to put, we're going to put these numbers in order of size. What I have to do now is I have to find the low, uh, lowest common multiple of all these numbers. 3, 2, 6, 12 and 4. So that's a long list of numbers. And you can check your multiples of each number to find it if you don't know it already. But I'm going to give you the answer. The lowest common multiple of all these numbers is 12. 12 is the lowest number that all these numbers go exactly into. So I'm going to write all these over 12. And then we can see which ones are the biggest and which ones are the smallest. So I've multiplied that by... I'll put lines here to show what I've multiplied by. I've multiplied for this one, 6 for that one, 2 for that one, 1 for that one, and 3 for that one. And if I haven't said this, the way you find out what you multiply by is you divide this number here into that lowest common denominator here. Okay, so notice how if I divide that into there, I get 4. If I divide that into there, I get the 6. So I multiply the tops by the same numbers. So I get 8, because I'm multiplying it by 4. I get 6, because I'm multiplying that by 6. I get 10, because I'm multiplying that by 2. I get 1 here. Because I'm multi I got 7 here because I'm multiplying the 7 by 1 and multiplying the 3 by 3 here so I get 9. And now we can see which ones are bigger and which ones are smaller, can't we? Because look, we're all under the same denominator and it's just putting these top numbers in the order of size. So it goes 6 twelfths. 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, and 10 twelfths. But those weren't in the original problem, so we'll have to go back to what we were given. Notice how the 6 twelfths was originally 1 half. This 7 twelfths was originally still the same thing, 7 twelfths. This 8 twelfths was originally 2 thirds. This 9 twelfths was originally 3 quarters. This 10 twelfths was originally 5 sixths. So that's the order the fractions go in. We'll start off with 1 half as the smallest and this 5 sixths here is the biggest. Now in case you haven't seen this sign here before that I used, this means it's not equal to. Okay, so that's what that sign means if you haven't seen it before. And it's basically just a equal sign with a line going through it like that. So I've just done that there. If they're not equal, put that sign. If they're equal, put that sign. And you can just play about with them a bit to test if they're equal. See if one simplifies to the other. Multiply them both by the same number, etc. Okay. So that's all I really wanted to say about that. Next time we're going to use the lowest common multiple and lowest common denominator for adding fractions in the next lesson.